Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I'm Dr. Abstract. If we go to the Zim site now at zimjazz.com, scroll on down to school. We are on lesson three, and we're on the second video of lesson three. So we pop on into the lesson. We started in on functions. And here is uh, some information about functions. There we go. So make sure that as we go through the videos, you pop into Zim School and review the, the information here about hoisting and parameters and the return values and the scope. So that's what we looked at, basic functions, and you're welcome to practice there as well. And now we're going to go into the next section on these things called function literals and arrow functions. So you would then come to the site, the Zim site now, hit code and go get the template. We've done that already, so we'll pop into Atom. And we had made a file called Lesson 03. So we're in that file now, Lesson 03, where we made a function called greet. We had a label up there, a function called greet. We called the function called greet. I recorded what that function returned, if we so desire. We talked about scope, and we made a mess in here, didn't we? <laughs> All right, so let's scroll on down a little bit further and just talk about this thing called a function literal. So a function literal is also called an anon anonymous function, like that, because it has no name. It looks like this. Function round brackets and squiggly brackets. There we go. So this is the format of a function literal or an anonymous function. It has no, uh, no name. So up here, this was the format with a name, function greet. And you'll see that if we take away the name and take away the parameters, we're left with and take away all the stuff inside, we're left with the format of a function literal. So there's not much difference uh, between the two. However, uh, this is an object. Now, so is the other one. Uh, the, all functions are also objects. And this is a little bit unusual in the world of programming. In many languages, that's not the case. Uh, but in JavaScript, a function is an object. So you can also make a function say, hey, give me a new function. Just like we would say, give me a new number, or a new string, or a new array, or whatever else we're making. New, 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 new button, etc. Uh, however, this is the function literal, much like the number literal is the 7, and a string literal is, quote, high. Here is the function literal. Cool. And because it's an object, we can store it in a variable or a constant. Const um, f is equal to this function right here. Then later, if we wanted to run the function, much like we ran the greet function, we could run f, like so. Oops. Like so, and the function f would run. Shall we try that? We should put something in the function first. What should we do? Hmm, let's see. Uh, well, let's just zog it for now. Zog. This is how people often learn about coding, is they just show it up in the console. And uh, I guess that's what we'll do here. This is the anom. Anon is running there. Sounds mysterious, doesn't it? Let's check it out. So, we open this up in a browser. Oops, here we right click. Open in browser. We F12 and anon is running. There she be, line 69. Line 69, Anon is running. It indeed does run the function. Now, this is handy. It allows us to use that function or store it in a variety of different places and then use it as, as we want. Uh, for instance, remember this? Um, const obj is equal to squiggly brackets. That's an object literal. Inside of there, if we want, we can say a is quote apple, like that. And uh, then down here, we could say zog obj.a. That would zog 
OBJ, that's the object, OBJ's A property. And in the A property is stored apple. All right, let's see if this zogs apple. A little bit of a review of object literals. There it is, apple. Can we increase this? Plus, 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 plus. Is we working here? No, I guess that's it for the size of, of that. I thought it could go bigger. Control, plus, plus, plus. <laughs> no luck. All right, fine. Um, there we've uh, there we've accessed Apple that is stored inside that object. Well, check this out. Um, fun colon function round brackets squiggly brackets, and inside this function we will zog function or fun function. <laughs> there we go. Semicolon. So what we've done now is we've taken our function object and stored it in the fun property of OBJ. Here we took an apple or a string literal and stored it in the A property of OBJ and we need a comma there. So this is the first property and value. Here is the second property and value. We might have a third property and value. B is mm, ball. Okay, and note we put the comma in there, comma, comma. So get that. You could put that on one line if you want, if that's easier for you to see. A is for apple. Fun is for this function, comma. B is for ball. Okay, but to see it, you can open that up if you so desire. So we've stored a function inside of a property of an object. Now down below, how would we run that? We would run it like this, obj, that's the object, dot fun, that's the property, round brackets. And since fun is equal to this function, putting the round brackets there will run the function and it will zog fun function, or console.log. Refresh there, apple's been zogged and so has fun function. Nice. Isn't that cool? So that means we can store or use this object, we can store it anywhere we want and call it later if we so desire. And that's going to come in handy when we do these things called events because we want to run a function when an event happens. So what we do is we store the function as an object in the event and then when that event happens, it knows to call that function. We can also say call a function when we finish animating. So why don't we animate something? Let's animate the label. So that was, uh, was it called label? Const label is equal to this new label. So we say label.animate. And in here, we are going to specify all of the parameters that we want to animate. So the first one is the props parameter. And now here's the, the properties that we want to animate, such as, let's change its location, x to 300. Mm, could be close to 300 right now, x to uh, 500. There we go. Comma. How long do we want to do that for? Time colon 500 milliseconds. What function do we want to call when the animation is finished? Call colon the function that we want to call. Function round brackets squiggly brackets. This function object, this anonymous function right here, is what I want to call when the animation is finished. Cool, huh? And so right in here we can put as much as, as we want to do. So uh, at this point we could do something like label, oops, label dot remove from. This is a method that is going to remove the label from the stage, stage dot update. I think we do automatically at the in a call we do one up, uh, animate updates a stage. We do one stage.update after we call that, so we probably don't have to do that. There we go. All right, you ready? 
it's going to animate the label to position 500 in a short amount of time. And when it's done, it's going to call the function that we've stored there. Let's save that and refresh here. There we go. It animated the label and then it removed it. So isn't that handy? We were able to put a function there. Now, if we wanted to, we could have, we don't have to use a function literal there. We could call or, you know, a, a real function or like a, a, a named function like this function done brown brackets here. And we can put this stuff inside of done. And now we'll comment out all of that call stuff. Oops, period. We'll comment all of that call stuff and do it again. Call colon done. Like that. Now you might be looking at that going, hmm, well that's a little bit strange. You call the function done. I thought when you called an object, you had to put round brackets there. Ah. But we're not calling the function right now. We're not executing a function right here and right now. We're specifying which function to call when the animation is done. We need an identifier here. So here's the identifier. It knows now it's going to call that function later when the animation's finished. And then it will call that stuff. Uh, so what could we do instead of uh, removing it? We will say label dot ska uh, is times two. So we're going to scale the label twice as big. And we refresh here. Moves it, scales it twice as big. Moves it, scales it twice as big. Scaled it from the top left corner because of the registration point of the label. Uh, but if we, where is that label, greet person, way the heck up here, if we center reg, then it should work slightly differently. Mm -hmm. Now it doesn't go as far, because if it's center reg, uh, I guess 500 is here, we could, we could maybe make that go farther. Sorry, hopefully that's not giving you vertigo racing there. Scale to 800 and then make it bigger. Refresh. All right. Well, the idea was we wanted to show you that when the animation is done, that's the function we're going to call. Do not execute the function right there. If we try this, it won't work. Didn't, didn't animate. Oh, did you see what it did? It did change it, but it's bigger already. So basically what happens is, as we're defining this, we actually call the function done. The function done scales the label. So watch the difference. I take that off. I'll refresh this. Oh, I, yeah, I, I took it off. I saved it. Now it's small and gets bigger. So see the difference? In the previous one, as soon as I run that, it's bigger. Bigger already. Right? So that's not what we intended. Anyway, quite often in JavaScript, uh, we don't do it in two steps. Why do it in two steps? Something way down here when we could do it in one step right in there, like that. Call this function. The thing is, we're never going to have to use that function again. This is the only place this function is going to be called from. So why bother putting it down here? If indeed we had to call it from somewhere else later, say from another animation or from a click or something else later, then sure, we could put it down here and call it like this. Or say to the function, please, um, please call that function later. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> then if we did another animation, we could again call that same function if we so desired. And because we've declared it outside, that allows us to call it from multiple places. All right, so that's enough of that. Those are some nuances there. What we really want to get out of this is that we can call a function, or we can declare a function, not declare, not call. We can um, 
store a function as an object like that and that can be used. So we're passing that object as an object, passing that function object into animate and animate later we'll call that when it's done. There's also a rewind call and a wait call. Uh, there's there's a, uh, what's called a timeout. This is different than animate. There's a timeout and that can call a function. There's events and those can call functions. But we're going to see those in the next video when we look at events. There's one more thing that I want to look in at in this video. And that is, where do we have our function literal? Right here. There's a new way in JavaScript 6 to create a function literal, and it's called a, an arrow function. So we'll say const a is equal to, and the arrow function is almost the same, but it's a slightly different syntax. So we don't put a keyword function, so we get rid of that. Boop! And instead, we put this arrow in between those. So there, this is the same thing, and I'm going to zog that where uh, arrow is running, and then much like we did the F round brackets, we we're going to say A round brackets. So here we've stored an arrow function, arrow function. Here, this thing was our function literal or anonymous function. this up top just to be consistent. There we go. Arrow function. What do you think? Let's try her. We refresh here. Fun function. I don't see. Oh, there it is. Arrow function is running right after anon is running. Arrow function is running. Cool. And you can use it the same way that we did uh, this. You put the arrow function in there. You can use it in the same way that we did this here. Shall we do that? We'll comment this out. We'll do it again. Call. Now we want an arrow function. Colon, round brackets, the equal sign arrow, and squiggly brackets. And in here, what do we do? Label dot remove from, for instance. There we go. Let's see if it works. Refresh. Boop. Cool, huh? We didn't make it bigger that time. We removed the label with this call right here. Now, if there's a parameter that you want to pass in to that or collect, so we would collect a parameter here. We might collect, um, how about the age? And in here, we will put 20. So now we're calling age. We're passing in 20. We're collecting the age, and we can add on to it age. So we're going to concatenate the age. Arrow is running and then it will say 20 after because we collected the age. So we save that and we refresh here. Whoop. Arrow is running and 20. So that's uh, why we kept the brackets error because of parameters. However, they have decided that if we only have one parameter, uh, let me copy this. Whoop put it in there and we're going to get rid of that and comment that one out. So that's your basic arrow function. Well, actually without the, even the assignment, but um, down here when we have one parameter, we can remove the brackets. So, so yeah, ah, whatever. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Whatever. It's, it's handy sometimes. Uh, one of the nice things is, is when we do an event, we often have one event object that we're storing, or one, one parameter that we collect, and we call it E, and it makes, makes it easier in that case, and in some other cases as well. Um, so that will work as well. Shall we try it? We'll change the age to 22. Oh, that's just made us two years older learning that. And we refresh, and now arrows running with 22. So you kind of get used to that. If you have two parameters, 22, and uh, let's see, um, what can we put in here? How about a, a taste of something? Sweet. <laughs> Sweet 22. <laughs> then we need to connect, collect two things here. This is the uh, taste. Um, you can't do that. You can't leave them loose like that. So then we have to put them 
back into the right brackets. That's one of the re you know, kind of like, uh, okay, really, you know, uh, what about consistency? I mean, you simplified it fine, but it's not consistent. If you, for zero things, you've got to put the brackets. For one thing, you have to, you don't have to put the brackets. For two or more things, you have to put the brackets again. So it's like back and forth, isn't it? But anyway, that's how you would collect two parameters. Uh, and then you would say something like plus, quote, comma, and then plus our other parameter, which was the taste. All right, so uh, let's check it out. Refresh here. And there it is. Arrow is running 22. Sweet. <laughs> Whatever. Um, remember that I told you that there was a templating thing in JavaScript? That's a lot of in and outs of, of JavaScript. Let me just show you that quickly since we're on ES6 with uh, the arrow template. We're seeing something new. We may as well take a look at the, the templating. We won't see everything about it. but And we haven't really seen er everything about the arrow function either. If you're going to return, then you actually don't. You, if you just have one line, you can just put the line. And I don't even think you need the squiggly brackets and it will return it. Anyway, there's a few other things like that that you're going to have to look into. One day you'll learn how to use them with the arrow function. So uh, that came from other languages. And so JavaScript for a long time didn't have it. And people said, yeah, I don't want to use JavaScript because I like arrow functions. So JavaScript in ES6 or JavaScript 6 finally came along and said, OK, we'll give you arrow functions too. So uh, now we're learning arrow functions. Ooh. Now, what did I want to do here? Oh, yeah, zog arrow is running. So what we're going to do instead, it would be nice if we could just do this somehow. If we could have the age there and the taste here like that. Do we put a comma in there? It would be comma there. If we could just do that all within uh, the quote somehow. In PHP, PHP is a templating uh, language. You can use these things called dollar signs. So, uh, but the PHP variables would be collected in dollar signs, um, dollar signs or the parameters, whatever. We don't do that in JavaScript. We don't put a dollar sign in front of a variable name. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but we don't in general. And we've always liked that. That keeps that keeps JavaScript looking a bit more simple, you know, instead of having dollar signs everywhere. However, there is an advantage to doing the templating. So what we've done is um, provided a different, or what JavaScript's done is provided a different type of arrow, and it's called a backtick. And so if we select all of that thing and, and back tick around it, so this is the back tick. It's at the very top left corner of your keyboard. So now instead of using normal quotes or instead of using single quotes, we have a back tick like that. This will turn JavaScript on for templating. And it doesn't quite work like this. You put these in squiggly brackets. So what JavaScript has given us is these uh, a dollar sign squiggly brackets and then inside of here you can put any expression that evaluates to something and in this case we're putting the variable age and same with in in this place so that's kind of neat you could put 10 plus 2 in there and it would it would put the answer in as a string so shall we try it now it's going to zog this twice and let's see if we get the same thing each time we refresh here, arrow is running 22 sweet, arrow is running 22 sweet. So I don't know, what do you think? Have a look. Which one do you think is easier? I think in the end you're going to find that is easier. A uh, bit faster to do and also more powerful. Well, it's not, I mean you can also evaluate expressions in here. But um, anyway, that's the, the new templating. Templating, it's called. It's almost it harkens back to the days of, oh, I don't know, word processing, where you would have little templates or macros or insert things there. <laughs> Code to build, build the text that you want to build. Great. All right. Well, I think that that's pretty good. We saw a general uh, function literal. Well, earlier in the in the last video, we saw a general function, a declared function, a named function, named function, and then here we've got the, the function literal, 
think there, or anonymous function. And we've stored that, and this, you don't have to always store it, but if we want to run it later, then we need a reference to it. So now we have a reference to it. But you could store it in an object, as we did here. So here is, oh, not there, here. We made an object. We stored that function in an object. And as a matter of fact, that is very powerful. This is how a lot of the libraries are built. I think this is how Zim is built. So Zim's got a general object called Zim. And in that general object, we store all these classes as, as functions. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's extremely handy. And then you can run them. This label is like that. Uh, the one thing that we've done is when we, we make a new label, that was at one point stored in Zim. As a matter of fact, if you want, you can still use that. Zim.label. And there it is running, in a sense. It's running that as a, as a class, it's called. Um, but then eventually we said, okay, we took everything out of there and we made them as global variables. So that's uh, a little bit advanced. That's what we did. So alternatively, we can either use the global variable or we could call the function from, <laughs> where the heck was it, from our object, much like that. And we also saw that there's uh, the ability to call a function um, right inside of here when we animate to call a function. There it is right there, that one commented out. And then we looked at arrow functions, woot woot. Okay, the new arrow function, and we saw the, the fast way of doing it. If we just have one parameter, we can get rid of the brackets and have only one parameter collected, followed by the arrow. And if you look at the Zim stuff on CodePen, in CodePen it's all filled with that. We're going to see more of that too in the next video. Uh, this has been a learn JavaScript with creative coding. We've gotten into the nitty gritty of the different types of functions. And we're going to see those more in the next video. If you're binge watching these videos, you'll see that as soon as we finish this fine dancing interlude. <laughs>